Hi, this is Alex Palt with uh, Open Systems Media and uh, Embedded Computing Design, and I'm here at the Things Conference with one of the co-founders, Johan, uh, oh God, okay, I forget your last name, I apologize, Stocking. Johan Stocking, I apologize, Johan. It's just there's so many people been coming through and I just don't, I apologize. But so, Johan, you're one of the co-founders of the organization. Um, what I want to hear is, how did it all start? All right, that's a good question. Um, it started about three and a half years ago, and my, my co-founder, Winke, he um, found out about the LoRa technology on a meetup, and he thought, you know, um, maybe we should build a network. And um, so he came to me with the idea of uh, building an open network, an open LoRa network. And so we started thinking about it and thinking about how to do that, setting up communities. And then it started uh, well, Why really LoRa, though? Why LoRa? Because you can, you can build a network yourself. Uh, you don't need to have licensed spectrum. You don't, you, not like a telecom operator. Um, it's much like setting up a Wi-Fi network, but the performance is very much like um, a long-range uh, network, uh, like um, uh, what we see now with 5G. So you can you can set up the network yourself, um, and it's long-range, super low power. So it, it also opens the door for a lot of new um, uh, business cases and use cases. So we, um, we started really as an experiment, uh, implementing the specification and then inviting community members to buy a gateway and connect it to our uh, network server, our implementation. And that was three and a half years ago, and now we are here um, with 1,500 people uh, at the conference. Isn't that amazing, though, to go from almost zero to the speed of light in two years? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really amazing to see. It's, uh, we, we grew... Uh, we grew super fast. We have a, we double every year uh, the size of the community, size of the network, and uh, it's, it's super exciting. We also see that this whole LoRa ecosystem matures, so um, and we mature as well as a company. Uh, so we also started really as a small startup with just the two of us, and we grew now to to a team and, and an ecosystem uh, and an ecosystem. Yeah. So we were just talking about. You know the jacket. I'm, I normally never wear jackets, but I thought, you know, let's uh, let's do it for this conference. Well, and, and it's uh, a nice jacket. Thank you. So that's uh, that's um, yeah. That's that's also you know the, the the progress that we make. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting to see because one of the other aspects of uh, the Laura community that I see is you're really embodying the new generation of uh, systems design. The, it, it's relatively hardware agnostic. I mean, you touched on it a little. I mean, but obviously the hardware is an important factor. But it's more people are building blocks. They're putting modular systems together. They're looking more at the solution than at the means. Yeah. And actually, that is, that is super powerful and also a very open ecosystem. But it's also really hard if you, if you enter this market. If you come here, if you enter here at the entrance and you're new to LoRa, then you see all these building blocks. And I think it's really hard to um, figure out really how to build a solution with that. And um, I think. We, as the Things Network and as a community, do a good job at facilitating uh, device makers and solution makers, systems integrators with the tools um, for, for building those end-to-end -end solutions. But I also think that um, the, the openness that LoRa has and the LoRa Alliance is, uh, is also um, slowing down the uh, adoption. If you compare that, for example, to other technologies where everything is um, proprietary, closed, one market, one network, for example, which is super easy to get started with, uh, where you uh, eventually um, are limited by the openness or uh, by the, uh, the uh, extent to which you can customize things. And LoRa is super open, but it also takes a lot of time, I think, for the market to really uh, adopt it. We, we now see it in the last year, we saw a huge uh, growth and, and, uh, and an adoption on the, on the business side, yeah. Well, and that's the other side, because I know you're pleasantly surprised, but how much of a surprise was it really? I mean, this is a functional approach. It's not just a novelty. You've got space systems now. You've got real solutions making real money in the industry. It's not just a, a toy. No, that's right. That's right. And, um, and it's actually funny also to see that um, a lot of companies that use this technology were already in, in IoT f for a very long time. And uh, before it was called IoT, it was machine-to-machine -machine communication, and they, they use uh, all kinds of proprietary ways to communicate, or Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth, and they, they take out those modules, uh, 2G modules, SIM cards, for example, and they, they replace it with LoRa. And those 
those companies, um, they already have a huge install base. They have customers, they have a supply chain, they have everything set up. Um, and that is, that is actually, that, that is a good validation of the, of the ecosystem. But um, we also see new companies here, like startups that, that are uh, building new products in a new market. My Devices is a good example. Uh, and and that's, that's super fascinating to see, um, uh, to, uh, to, to really bring, to, to bring new products that were not possible before LoRa uh, in, in a whole new way, uh, even to consumers. So that's, that's also, that's also LoRa, it's the same technology. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now, Johan, where do you see this entire ecosystem moving? Where do you see it all going? I think, um, I think it really goes to um, more to the, the way the internet is, is, has evolved. I, I see a lot of analogy with uh, how the internet was in the, in the, in the 80s, uh, before there was internet. In fact, there were all small networks uh, that were set up for different purposes. And when the internet came, uh, basically just connecting all these small networks and creating one big global network, um, a whole new economy uh, was created. And we are now in the same phase, I think, with LoRaWAN, where there are around 100 operated networks, and there are thousands of small private networks. And um, I think where it's, where it's going is that all these networks are uh, connecting with each other, and they are interconnected and they start exchanging traffic with each other, uh, very much like uh, how the internet evolved. So I think it's going there, and um, I really see LoRaWAN as internet technology and not like uh, a telecom uh, technology that, um, that has, uh, it's a whole different mindset. Right, well exactly, yeah. it's not telecom technology no, that's imported to the internet yeah. of things. This is a, yeah. a exactly. fundamental IoT yeah. infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, this is really, this is, this is internet, this is software defined networking, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So, how do people find out more? I mean, they can go to your website, but is there, you're looking for partners, you're looking for people to grow into it. Is there any procedure or can they just show up and say, hi, I'm here? Yeah, that, you can do that always. Uh, we, have, uh, we have communities all around the world. We have around 700, 800 communities worldwide. Um, so chances are that you have a community nearby and you can join them. You can find them on the thingsnetwork.org on the map. Um, they organize meetups, uh, they set up uh, local networks, uh, the community network. Uh, for those who are interested in um, building uh, commercial solutions, commercializing products, uh, we have a commercial offering through the Things Industries, it's our commercial entity, uh, with uh, private networks that are hosted, SLA backed, uh, and uh, we, have a, we have a website for that, thethingsindustries.com. Excellent. So, do you have any last words for our audience, something to talk about this, to talk about next year? <laughs> So it was last year uh, we announced the we, we, we had some announcements last year. This year was much much bigger. I I really wondering what we're gonna talk about next year. I think it has to be huge. Well, what's the uh, schedule for the events? So um, we will do a conference next year. Um, there will be a few conferences in between. Uh, so we have the Things Network, uh, the, the, the Things Conference on Tour program. So we did one already also in India and New York. There will be more uh, conferences uh, in, in New York. Uh, uh, there will be one in New York. Uh, there will be more in India also. Um, so we also work with local partners to organize that. Uh, and we are delivering a lot of technology this year. So we are delivering uh, our hosted solution on V3, our new uh, platform, but also the generic node that we announced yesterday and the gateways that we announced yesterday and the packet broker for exchanging traffic. So there's going to be a lot of delivery from our side in the coming months. Very cool, Johan. Yeah. Now, I noticed you mentioned New York and not Silicon Valley. Yeah. <laughs> so why is that? Is it you're focusing on end users and solutions as opposed to developers? Or what's, why, why New York and not California? Um, yeah, that's a good question. We, we, have, we have a really strong community. Sometimes you're just driven by, by, by communities and just organic growth. And uh, we, see, we see really, we have strong communities on the East Coast. Uh, we also have strong communities on the West Coast. Um, for me, it's a little bit random. Uh, I think, um, I, I'm, I think there's, gonna be, there's a huge market and huge potential for LoRaWAN in the US. Um, but so far, I think it's uh, it's hard to um, uh, it's it's hard to enter the, the American market. I think because it's a, it's a big country. So if you want to deploy a nationwide network like 
we've been doing here in Europe in, in, uh, with Laura uh, the, in, in, in France, in Netherlands, in Belgium. Uh, those are also big investments. But if you want to cover the United States and you have companies like AT&T, Verizon, Sprint that would have to commit to huge investments, it's, it's, it's very risky. It, it takes a while. I, I hope they do it. But on the other hand, there is also a huge um, potential for private networks. That's, that's our business. Uh, but we also have to explain the, the story of LoRa a bit more in the US than we have to do here because LoRa is, is, is a little bit bigger in Europe. Yeah. Well, and also, well, I think also because there is a maker, worldwide maker movement, but there are a lot of Europeans who are what I call semi-professional. You know, they're professionals in one sense, but they're still hobbyists in another sense, and there's a lot of tinkering going on. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's both. And you see also those that, that progress from tinkering to uh, commercializing solutions. We've also witnessed that from, uh, from the side where we saw people uh, tinkering and soldering their solutions together, and now they are selling it here in, in off-the-shelf, commercial off-the-shelf products. That's really cool to see. That yeah. is, yeah. 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 Very cool. So, hey, Johan, thank you so much for taking the time. And, sure. you know, I'm really glad. And this has been a great success. You should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. Thank you.